and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do front and rear brakes on an 83 to 2001 XJ Jeep Cherokee. Uh, a friend of mine called me up and needed some help and I searched it. Didn't see a whole lot of uh, videos. I mean there's some out there but I'm going to try to do a, a pretty in-depth one with all the tools and stuff so stay tuned. part numbers and the brake components that we're going to be using today. Try to get a little closer here for you guys. We are using my buddy Danny's lift just to make it a little easier and to try to make the video quality a little bit better. Um, you don't have to have a lift to do this job, obviously. Um, I do this stuff out of my garage all the time. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw this on the lift, put it in the air, start tearing these wheels off. Sometimes you got to have a neck size up socket because these things, when they get old, they swell up. In this case, that's what we gotta do. We're using a 19 inch. Because some of these are swollen up on there. Let me pull the wheel off. I'm to more out of right. For a second, uh, this vehicle actually, the stud is completely stuck on it. Uh, rusted, it was spinning behind the actual um, mount for the uh, rotor. So, as you can see, I had to get the good old fashioned torches up and cut the lug stud out of it itself. Uh, like I said, you couldn't even get the uh, lug nut off the end of the stud itself, so I had to cut it off to get the wheel off. Luckily for this guy, he has another set of wheels. That's why we're putting it on there. There's, that wheel is bad, so that's why I said, eh. We'll just go ahead and cut it off if it damages the wheel, damages the wheel. Sorry for the background noise. We actually got to evacuate the garage. Deadly fumes from this. Uh, it did tear the wheel up a little bit. Oops. But this stud was turning behind the rotor, so we're trying to get the rotors off to do this job. Uh, this thing has sat for a long time. So the next step, we're going to remove the brake caliper. If you can see, if I can get in to remove these, there's two of them, an upper and on the bottom there's a lower if I can get it to go in there. My suggestion is to pre-soak these, especially if it is as rusted up as this is, uh, pre-soak them with like a JB80 PB blaster. Might even have to put a little bit of uh, heat to it so they don't remove to get the brick caliper off. Um, it takes a special socket back here. It's gonna look like that. And 
this one is a 5 sixteenths. And some of the stuff I'm finding is metric and some of it's uh, standard. So as you can see, there's no play. That thing goes right on there. Now before you remove the caliper all the way off, I would remove this banjo bolt out of the actual back of the caliper. It's going to be easier than when it's hanging and dangling. So uh, you'll need to remove the one bolt in the back. Make sure you get your washers that are on there. This is a 9 16 Got to use a little persuasion to get these off of here. The next step would be to grab a hold of the wheel itself and remove it. Um, normally, you don't have to cut the studs out. You actually got one seized up, but this one actually turned behind the hub. It's stripped out, so let me try to get in here, as you can see. So I didn't get into the actual hub or heat the hub up whenever. I did that there. There's some char in there, but that was from map gas earlier. We had to heat the uh, lugs up. You'll slide the rotor on. As you can see, we're missing a stud. We're just waiting for the parts store to show up. It slides on very easy. This uh, particular model does not have the set screws that are normally in between your studs. Um, it just goes on and the brake caliper holds it on. Simple. How do you know it's the left caliper and the right caliper? Hmm. Fitment. This will be one of the new front brake calipers that we're going to stick on. In this kit, they were actually nice enough to give us new banjo washers for the brake line and new bolts, which are different thread than the, or, uh, the pitch on the head is different. So instead of it being a 12 point, it is actually going to install the brake pads onto the caliper. Um, there is an inner and an out, outer one. Um, an outer, let me see if I put that in there. The outer has a clip like that uh, to go on the outside of the brake caliper. The other one goes into the piston and it looks like this. It pushes the clips in with a spring. Easy peasy. Might be a little struggle, but uh, there's little rubber boots in the back, and you can push them and extend that boot out like that on the top right here. Um, that'll help out a lot. Um, a little more lighting in here, as you can see. This will make you guys' life a lot easier. Before you can actually get the brake pads over the uh, caliper and the rotor, you make sure that your tabs are the same. It is possible to switch brake pads. Of course, this is a new one and an old one, but it's possible to put a left and a right side caliper and a right and a left side caliper and try to put it on and you'll fight it for uh, 15, 20 minutes before you figure that out. Just a little tip for you guys. So you get your caliper lined up and the two back uh, sliding pins lined up. You can put your bolts in. We are going to use the new hardware, converts it to a 12 millimeter, but you can reuse the stock stuff if it's in good condition still. On those brake caliper bolts, it uh, looks like they're going to be 15 foot pounds. I went ahead and uh, posted up from the service manual the brake uh, specs there in torque. So when you go to put your brake line back on, you're going to need to put a new crush washer on both sides of it. So you put one there and then you slide it over the brake line and then you put one on the inside of it also and then you bolt that to the brake caliper. Now before we bolt this down we'll go ahead and clean that line up and clean the bolt up so that it's nice and uh, there's nothing on the threads and then we'll proceed to torque it to uh, the spec from Jeep. After you've cleaned your bolt up and cleaned your line up, 
You're going to install it and torque that bolt to 276 inch pounds or that is 23 foot pounds. For this part, you probably are going to want a second person unless you have a speed bleeder that you can hook up. Um, we're going to do this one with a second person because this is probably what most people are going to have. But as you can see, you have an 8 millimeter uh, bleeder on this caliper. And you also have your bolt that's on your line. Um, you've already got both sides installed with the new stud in it. And now what we're going to do um, is we're going to bleed the brakes. So I'm going to have Daniel in the vehicle and he's going to pump the, the brakes three to five times until he presses it all the way to the floor and holds it. And then I'm going to crack the bleeder on both sides until I get no air out. Now a tip is as you're bleeding this, if you're doing both sides of it, you may have air that's actually in the line that won't bleed out. So you may just pump and pump and pump and not get a pedal. So, so the tip of the day is when you're bleeding brakes, you have a bleeder and you have your line. Pump your brakes get them until your pedal starts to get tight, which is probably gonna to go to the floor for a while, and then crack the line on both sides until you get a solid stream coming out of the line. Then pump your brakes up and crack the bleeder. You will thank me for that. Tip of the day. Then pump it up as tight as you can get it with pumping it three to five times. Hold it and have somebody crack the line crack the line that's going to have any air that's right there is going to come out immediately close it and then uh, you should be able to at that point have a pedal and start to get good brakes the next step after you've bled the brakes would be to reinstall your front wheels install the lug nuts and torque, make sure you torque these to the proper spec. I'm not going to show you everything because everybody knows how to tighten on a uh, wheel up, but uh, you do want to do it in a crisscross star pattern. Ah! Now we're starting on the rear. We're obviously going to remove all the lug nuts with a 19 millimeter socket. We went ahead while we were doing the front and soaked these lugs down with uh, some JB80 made it a lot easier. Sometimes you gotta have a little persuasion to get it off there. After you move the wheel, you'll see the brake drum. A little persuasion sometimes needed to get the uh, drum off if the uh, if it's rusted and seized up or if the uh, actual uh, cylinder is stuck on the e-brake or whatnot. This one not so bad, just a quick little tap. But we're going to replace on the rear um, both wheel cylinders and the uh, brake shoes. Try to get this thing working so that the e-brake's working. This is a hardened pick. That's the part number from Snap-on. Get the zoom in there. I'm going to use this to uh, remove these springs off of here by uh, sticking that into behind that spring there rolling up and rolling that off there it's kind of hard to do one-handed so you bear with me one moment here so what you're going to do is kind of roll back and watch your eyeballs and flip that forward and getting new hardware so um i just rolled that forward and take that spring off i'm going to do that with this one also See is I'm putting that pick in there and rolling it back over the edge and then I'm pulling hooking the spring and pulling it back off there so you'll actually have to remove this bottom spring also that way your pads you can remove your pads um, there's little turn these springs right here these actually push in and turn we'll get that here in a second after I remove this bottom spring you do is you can grab one of these little notches you push in and you turn that and then what it does is 
it actually pops out of this little hole there. These are a little seized. It's actually released. I just got to pop it out of there with a pick. So the key to this, uh, when you're getting them off there, this probably is, there's probably a tool for this, but you want to get something that you can spread and press against it. You press in and hold against the stud on the back press, spin, and it releases the spring out just like that. And it's important to get two of them. There's, uh, or there's two of them on this, essentially. And same thing for the other one. You press in, spin, hold the stud through the back of the actual drum housing, and it'll pop right off. And uh, both springs. There's a cable that runs in and connects from that uh, top pin over to the bottom. Uh, looks like the emergency brake mechanism. Uh, you just want to remove that off so that you can get your pad separated. As you can see, if you just pull on them, they pull out really easy. There's a little stud that holds them at the bottom, but once you remove it from the stud and uh, remove the actual uh, vacuum from them, they twist out, it locks in. It's very easy. And we actually took the guide rod out and put it up on the leaf spring. We're going to replace both the springs that go on the ends, but this is what actually the two brake shoes rest against uh, so they don't close all the way up and keeps them properly spaced. And then the actual brake cylinder is what presses out on both ends there and puts pressure against the uh, brake pads against the drum for your rear brakes. Um, this is the actual springs and the pin that put it back together. Remove the wheel cylinder on the back part. I don't know if I'll be able to get in here or not, but on the back part of the drum assembly, which it's going to be impossible for my camera, you'll just have to trust me. Um, your brake line is an 8, and there's two 10 millimeters on the actual cylinder. You'll just need to break those loose and uh, slip the brake line back and then remove the wheel cylinder. We're going to do that now. I'll show you, but I can't get the camera and uh, arms in there at the same time. After you remove your cylinder, you can start putting your new hardware in. So to get this off, you're, you're basically you're going to press up on this spring, pull back and lift it up over this tab, and then you're going to rotate this cam forward until the opening is bigger and pull it out of there. And then once you do that, you can remove your spring out of here. Be careful, it is going to have a little bit of tension on the back side of it. Uh, but yeah, that, that's going to be how you're going to separate that. So to put this on, you're going to actually press it up in there and put a little bit of tension on it and then press this down until it seats down. And then you can install your locking plate back over top. Now this is going to go like this, if I can do it with my gloves on here. Um, you might need a pair of pliers for this. I would recommend grab a hold of it, twist out, make sure it goes back up under it like that there. This piece, with the spring and your lock cable on it, actually slide in to your spring, just like so, and then pull back around like this. It sits back in there over your tabs. Now, in the previous, I told you that that was the top, but that's actually the bottom. I messed up. The top is actually uh, built on with the cylinder. So there's a hole right here. This mounts to this hole right here. What you'll have to do is kind of turn the pad until it finds the, or the shoe, until it finds that hole. And then you can press this back up in to where your cylinder is. And uh, let's see here. Yep, just like that. And then you'll line your, your hole up in the back here. And where's the new pen? It's down there on the floor, of course. But I'm going to grab the other one out for time being. This pin will go up through the back side and you will reinstall your new springs back on. Your cable that was hooked from the bottom, you're going to stretch it up after you've put in your springs. You're going to stretch it up back around your uh, moon piece here. Now that piece actually pops out. There's a little dowel in the back that clips it in and then it hooks back up on your top here. We actually did not replace the cylinder on this. Uh, 
we're going to show another video with that in it uh, but for time right now we're just going to show you putting this back together as we went ahead and installed both uh, springs onto the pads there's a guide rod up top and there's a new spring that goes in there that goes in between I actually got to adjust this here a little bit on this side still but I haven't got it all the way back I just got to shift it um, shift the brakes and put the adjuster back on the bottom adjust it out um, and that's pretty much it it's not too bad uh, the adjuster just slips in between and stays in between here and uh, then you adjust that and adjust your drag out on it so that it's not dragging on the uh, the new uh, rear brake drum itself what I did is first you want to get your bottom spring in which I got it lined up I just got to click it back on there I uh, just disconnected it, but it, you want to make sure that the back is actually in there because you will play hell trying to get that thing back in there. Um, hook your top ones up. Make sure your center spring is in there and it's seated right uh, against your um, wheel cylinder. Double check over your spring clips. Make sure they're rotated the proper way. And then what we'll do next is I'll go ahead and I'll hook that spring up there and then I'll put the wheel adjuster back in the bottom and uh, finish this up. Look like once you have all of your springs and your adjuster in there properly. Now, you can buy a spring puller or you can use this tool I got from Snap-on. Like I say, that is the part number. All I did was pull each spring, hook it back into the holes where it's properly supposed to be and uh, pull those springs and the bottom spring down here with that tool, press them on, and it was pretty easy. Got to put a little strength behind it, but other than that, it's not too bad. So you'll slide the drum back over the brakes, and then next, we'll grab the wheel and uh, install it back on and retorque the lugs. And you want to make sure that you hand start all of your lugs. We actually got new ones for this. Make sure you torque it back. I would, since it's steel, I'd go to 100 foot pounds. If it was aluminum wheel, you'd go to 80. All right, I didn't get to shoot a outro while I was still at Danny's uh, doing the brake job. But uh, I figured I would go ahead and end this out. Um, there was a couple things I did not get to put in the video. Um, we put anti C's on the brake bolts that uh, hold the calipers on. And um, I'm trying to think of what else we did there that I didn't show. Oh, on the rear brake adjuster, um, if you're not careful, it can slip and fall down. So uh, you'll see in maybe the probably the, the last couple shots there, the brake adjuster looks like it's definitely not sitting in the right spot. That's because it is not. Uh, it actually sits a little higher up in there. It uh, was adjusted all the way in, and whenever we were adjusting the actual brakes left to right, um, it slid down. So you just push it up, and it'll allow your brake shoes to collapse properly, and you should have no problem. Thanks, uh, I know I got stuff on my face because that was a greasy job. Thanks and have a great day. Like and subscribe.